Now, can we put those hands together for the one who deserves the glory? Come on, I know you can make it louder. I need you to let it be your loudest praise tonight. Praise him like you know something is about to change in this place tonight. Praise him like you know that your life will never remain tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come down. Now, come make me feel like I'll be guest minister for my world. <laughs> Praise God. Before you sit down, something happened to me as I walked in this evening. So, as I walked in, I was a bit I was a bit upset with Pastor Maka. Yes. She doesn't know, but I was a bit upset with Pastor Maka. I was upset with her because I don't plan myself that this conference, I will attend this conference. Do you understand? Like, you know how you plan that you will listen to all the guest minister? Maybe they will now put me on maybe Friday. Do you understand? To speak. So I was already dragging my face. And then I walked into the bathroom with Minister Ogo. And she said something. And I feel like it was God that was speaking through her. So when we were in the bathroom, she said, I said, oh, I didn't even know I was speaking today. She now said, eh, uh -uh, that me that already gossiped you. I said, what did you, what were you talking about? She said, ah, we don't eat outside now. You know when you're going for party, you will first eat your mother's food mm, before you now go outside. So God now answered me that that's the reason why I came up first. So tonight... You eat your mother's food. So that when guest minister come, you not disgrace yourself. <laughs> Praise God. Let's lift those hands to heaven and just thank him one more time. Say, Father, we're grateful. There's such a strong presence of God tonight. I can tell people are already charged up. People are hungry. I sense there's a strong pull in this room tonight. I want us to lift our hands again and say thank you. It's not a small thing for God to come and dwell with you. And I need you to understand that. It's not a small thing. So don't ever get used to the presence of God. My biggest prayer in life is, Lord, may I never lose my wonder. May you always be new to me. May it always be new mercies every day. May I encounter new and fresh dimensions of you every day. So I want you tonight to, to declare that tonight, let me hear a fresh word. Let it be a word that will turn my life around. It may be something I've heard before, but Lord, let it be in a new dimension. Let me see fresh instruction. Let me see fresh direction. Father, we thank you. We're very grateful. That even though you are the most high God, yet you will still dwell with us, mere mortals. We are very grateful and we don't take it for granted. We thank you because we know that tonight will become a defining moment for a lot of us. For your word will come with accuracy. It will correct the wrong things that we have learned all this while. It will give direction. It will answer our questions. Lord, I ask tonight that we'll have eyes that see that will have ears that hear and hearts that understand, and that will receive fresh grace to obey your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, celebrate Jesus as you take your seat tonight. And as you are taking that seat, I want you to shout, I love 2022. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. So... So tonight, I'm not just going to, I mean, I'm, I'm trying very hard not to teach a new or deep revelation. Because as I was coming this evening, something dropped in my heart. And that's the fact that a lot of times when we teach on faith, we teach at the level we are at. Forgetting that there are a lot of people who don't even understand the concept of faith as a whole. 
And I need you to understand that faith is very important. It's not something that you learn about when you ha have free time or something you learn about when you have a challenge. Because that's what usually we do as Christians. When you have a difficult situation, then you start to learn about faith and try to know what the principles of faith are. And the truth is, I'm no different than you because that was also what happened in my life. Um, so growing up, li literally didn't have any need for faith. And sometimes I really wish I had learned about faith when I didn't need it. Praise God. I wish I had learned about faith when I didn't need it. I wish I didn't wait till I was faced with a difficult situation to start learning about faith. What it does is that it slows you down. It will slow you down. So I grew up like pretty much the average child, you know, what, what most people call a mugget inside, well pampered, well taken care of, all our needs were met, all our bills were paid. So really didn't have a need to believe God for anything. I knew God because we were introduced to God. And I was brought up in a Christian home. So we went to church. So I never really had a need for faith. I passed my exams when I should pass them. I read my books when I passed. I, I was sick. I went to the hospital. They gave me medicine. I got better. Um, if I had a need, I would write a list. My father would give me the money. I would go and pay. I didn't have to believe for my school fees. I didn't have to, you know, so I never really encountered faith like most people do today. Until... I actually got married. Now, interestingly, um, what I'm going to do, even though I'm going to share what faith really is and some of the misconceptions people have about faith, um, and of course, we'll start from Hebrews 11. There's no better place to start from. But what I really want to do for you tonight is actually show you the practical side of faith. I don't just want to share the things that my ears have heard or the things my eyes have seen, but the things that my own hand have handled. My life turned around the day I understood the principles of faith. I understood what faith is. I understood how to get faith and how to let my faith loose to produce for me. That's what changed my life. So even when I was in university, um, I was literally the woman with the issue of blood. And I know some of you, if not all of you, have heard my story before. So I was the woman with the issue of blood, literally. So I, would, I was always bleeding. I would need to be on drugs not to bleed. Um, and this started when I, when I turned 16. So that's, that was a long time coming. And I remember one particular episode. I passed out, and so they rushed me to the hospital. And when I came back, they dropped me back in school about three days later, after I was better. A friend of mine dropped a note on my bed and said, if only you will touch the hem of his garment, you will be healed. And that was the most confusing thing in my entire life. Because even though she was trying to do me a favor by encouraging me with the word, Jesus was nowhere to be found with the hem of his garments. So I didn't understand how I could touch the hem of his garment. And I prayed about it for so long. I kept praying that, Lord, I want to touch the hem of your garments. And you see, these are some of the things we do as Christians today because some things sound nice. They're cliche. They sound really nice. But they are not faith. A lot of things that we do and we're carrying about that we say, oh, I'm in faith. They're not faith. Is there anybody here believing God for something? Can I see your hand? Beautiful. And you've been believing God for that. How long for that thing now? For quite a while. So you see, the first problem is that when you are believing God for something, you are not in faith. You are in hope. I will start from there. Hebrews 11, from verse 1. I'll read the New King James Version, and then I'll read other versions so that it can become clear to you. I don't think there's anybody in this room that does not know that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm sure there's every, everybody. And I said that thing. I quoted it. I said it over and over again. In fact, I think I meditated on it, but it didn't make sense to me. But let's read it anyway. I'll read from verse 1 to 6. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, 
we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead still speaks. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let's go back to verse 1. Take me back to verse 1. It says, now faith. In fact, let's read it together. One, two, go. Is it on the screen? One, two, go. Things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Can we read it again? How many of you know that the Bible always says what it means and it means what it says? How many of us also know that the Bible is the word of God? How many of us believe it? Because that's where we need to start from. Do we all agree that the Bible is the word of God? And we all agree that the Bible says what it means. So this scripture, this very first verse that you're reading, most of you are reading it as now faith. Like there's a comma between now and faith. There's no comma. Now faith is, not will be, not was. Now faith is. Faith is present. So if you say you are believing, it's not faith. Faith is now. I believe, I receive, I have. Don't worry, I'll make it simpler. Because this thing, eh, let me tell you why I learned this thing by force. Because when I said trusting God for children, doctors told me I will not have children. So when I got married, I told Pastor Kepaske, say, well, who said, we will not have children. The word of God said, you know that one, she did me braggadocious. Just said, God, move where, in fact, I will name them, David and Davida. Me, I was following him. It's love I was using to follow him, not faith. But when I now got into the marriage, first year, no children, second year, no children, third year, no children. Ah, ah. I read my Bible, I'll say, I'm believing God. My husband will tell me, you are not in faith. When you are in faith, I will know. I don't know if you've believed God for something before and somebody will tell you you are not believing. It's the most painful, hot tears will be coming out of my eye like this. Like, what do you mean I don't believe? What do you mean? Pastor say, it's simple. You receive it. It's yours. Ah, that thing's to pepper my body. But let me tell you, once you get it, eh? once you understand it, faith will become easy for you. And the minute I got it, I understood what he meant by when you are in faith, I will know. So this scripture is very clear. In fact, let's move to, give me, give me a, a different version. Maybe give me CEV. Okay, let's do, let's do Amplified Classic. That's fine. It says, now faith. Can you see it in capital letters? That's faith that is present. Now faith. It says, it's the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. It's like somebody tells you that, oh, I've given you a property down the road. And the person gives you a title deed. Even though you are not carrying the land about in your handbag, every time somebody says, you have land down the road, what do you say? Yes. Do you say, I'm believing I have land? You are not believing you have land because you have the title deed. You have something that you're carrying about. <laughs> so that's what faith is. It says it's the confirmation of the things that we hope for. Faith cannot be hope. Because it is the confirmation of what we are hoping for. So hope is essential. Hope is where you start from. The Bible says that whatsoever things you desire, whatever you are hoping for, hope is the foundation on which we build faith. There must be desire. There must be something you want. You want a job. You want a child. You want a husband. You want, a, you want money. You want something. You want a promotion. There must be something you are hoping for. If there's no hope, there can't be faith. Because hope is the foundation on which we put blocks of faith. So it says, being the proof of the things that we do not see. We may not see the land, but we know. There's something we're holding that tells us that there's land and it's mine. It said we may not see it. And it is the conviction of their reality. 
faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Give me CV. Sometimes you may need to read a scripture over and over and over again before you really get it. It says, faith makes us sure of what we hope for. So do you see that faith is not hope? Faith is, I have it now. Hope is, I believe that one day I'm going to get it. So I started out believing that one day God is going to give me my children. In fact, I had scriptures to prove that God was going to give me my children. I kept on believing. When I entered faith, faith was what made me sure that I had it. Faith is the substance. It is what gives your hope substance. It is what gives what you are hoping for something you can hold on to. So faith and hope are not the same thing at all. So from today, you start by changing your language. You are not believing. You believe that you have received. Don't worry, just follow me. We're building. It says faith makes us sure of what we hope for and gives us proof of what we cannot see. I can't see the land, but the title deed is in my bag. As far as I'm holding the title deed, is mine. It's not going to be mine, it's mine. I already have it. That's what faith is. Faith has given it to you. You know, a lot of times people think that when they pray is when God now starts running around to give them what they desire. And maybe because I run Hannah's Heart, it's a ministry for women trusting God for the fruit of the womb. A lot of times they send me messages and they say, please pray for me. God is not hearing me. I want a child. And I'm laughing. God is more interested in giving you that child than you are. In, you, we don't convince God in prayer. Faith is not to bully God. You cannot bully God. God is God. Whether you believe him or not. And we must settle that. He's not your mate. He's not your errand boy. He's not your house boy. That you say, ah, you don't reach, you'll go bring husband for me. Because, and if you don't bring the husband by this time next year, I will backslide. If you like, front slide. God will still be God. Give this to me in TPT. It says, now faith brings our hopes into reality. So do you see, is it clear now that faith is not hope? It says it brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. That's why I say it is what gives you what you are desiring. It's something that you can hold. It says it is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Now, when we're talking about faith, the truth is every single human being here has faith. Everyone has faith. How many of you walked into this place and just sat on your chair? Did you check it? Did you check the chair before you sat on it? If you checked it, then something's wrong with you. The average human being will just enter and sit down. Every one of you sat down without checking your chair. Why? Because you believe it will carry you up. But that's not the kind of faith we're talking about. The faith that we're talking about is faith that is produced through the word. Because if you understand the source of this faith, if you understand what this faith can do, then you will be able to build on it. Take me back to New King James. Verse 2, faith is very powerful. Faith can change your world. Tell your neighbor, faith can change your world. And that's one of the reasons why meetings like this, you cannot miss them. If you sit under the word for one week, hearing faith messages, I guarantee you that there's no mountain that will survive. The Bible says, who is that mountain before Zerubbabel? It will be made plain ground. There's, there's a way you will understand what we're talking about. You will come out and be looking for challenges. It says this faith that we're talking about is what the elders used to obtain a good testimony. Look at verse 3. It says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. If you are not careful, you will assume that this is talking about creation. You will think that this, is all, this, this scripture is telling you that God used faith to build, create the world. No. Look at that scripture very well. It says the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds, 
times, eras, seasons, eons were framed by the word of God. And say so that the things which are seen were not made of things that were visible. He talked about the elders. What he's saying is that the elders use faith to frame their world. If they could use it to frame their world, it's telling you that you can use faith to frame your world. They told me I couldn't have children. I framed it three children today. You can use it to frame your world. When I met my husband, he didn't have money. I framed a rich man. You can use it. I'm telling you, you see, once you catch this thing, your life will never remain the same. You understand what it means to live above the systems of this world. You understand what it means to buy without money. Hey, I hope that at the end of this meeting, that your life will be transformed. It says, give me verse 4. And then he begins to tell us the kind of things that they did. You see, sometimes when we think of faith, all we think about is what we can get. Sometimes faith is not even, that's not what faith is necessarily for. See what he said, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Then he goes on to tell us different people who framed their world. He talks about Noah. He talks about Daniel. He talks about Abraham. He talks about Sarah. Even Sarah, they call Sarah. They say by faith, she received strength to conceive. So even if Adam was, Abraham was healed, if she did not receive strength to conceive, the seed will be potent, there will be no womb. And unfortunately, faith is not sexually transmitted. I want you to think about it for a minute. Because if there's any man of faith I know is Pastor K. But I still have to go and learn it by myself. You still have to learn it. So first thing we've established is that faith is not hope. The second thing is that you can frame your world by faith. <laughs> Give me Romans 10, 17. I'm going to try to, to move a bit quickly. The truth of the matter is the third thing you need to understand. The faith we're talking about is not natural faith. It's not the faith that you just sit down on chair and everything's okay. No. Or I really believe. No. It's not that kind of faith. We're talking Bible faith. And there's, there's something that you use to create Bible faith. Faith can be created. Faith can be increased. Create, faith can grow. Faith can die. Romans 10, 17 says what? Let's read it together. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I know you quoted the scripture over and over and over again. Am I right? Give it to me in CEV. It says, no one can have faith without hearing the message of Christ. So faith can only be gotten through the word of God. If you do not use the word, you cannot have faith. Let me tell you why this is so important. Because faith is actually you believing. It's a substance, right? We established that. It's the substance of what you are holding, this, what you are hoping for. Now, the substance of what you are hoping for, what gives that thing substance is the word of God. And the important thing is whose word? Whose word? The word of God. So you are not just moving based on the fact that, ah, I have, I have courage, I get chest, I get mind. That, you're not just moving because of that, because you will fail. You are moving because of who said what he said. When you need faith, you go to the word of God and find out what God says about that situation. Then you sit on that word and you meditate on that word until it begins to cause faith to rise on the inside of you. Such that you know, like you know your name, that you have this thing. So, when I got married now, Pastor K would tell me, ah, when you, when you are in faith, I will know. But, let me tell you the truth. It's not so easy, and I'm saying it like this. But it's not so easy to just be reading Bible. You have bills to pay, you are reading Bible. You are, you are, you are bleeding, you are reading Bible. It's not to go to hospital and give you injection so that you'll be seeing road first. Abi? God says you should read Bible. So I, I went into the word, and I mean, I had many encounters, and this is, this is where I need people to understand. The word of God is alive. Jesus said that the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are alive. 
they are not just mere words. He said they are spirit and they are life. They are life-giving. When he speaks a word, the word itself is active and it is alive. It quickens that thing that he has sent it to do. And that's why God says that his word will never return to him void because he must accomplish the thing that he has sent it to do and prosper in the assignment that he has given it. I've, I've explained this to you over and over and over again that when God speaks a word, it will return. But it just will return empty. That's what he's saying. He didn't say his word will not return. It will return. It will return to give reports. That you said none shall be buried in the land. I have made them fruitful. God's word can never return to him void. So that's where you must put your confidence. Your confidence must be in the word of God. And let me tell you, the word of God in your mouth is as powerful as it is in God's mouth. In the beginning, the world was without form or void. Everywhere was darkness. Is that not how Nigeria is? What did God do? He said, he spoke his word. He saw it in his mind's eye. He believed it. And then he declared, let there be light. There was light. Then he started creating. So you too can do the same thing. You see, the Bible is not a storybook. It's alive. Kai, it's alive, guys. I'm telling you, it's alive. When you open the word and you meditate, and I'm, I see, I like faith books. I like videos. I like all those things. But open your Bible. There's a way you will breathe it. You will smell it. The, the words will jump at you. Open your Bible. I know we like phone. I don't know. You know me, I'm old school. But I like that paper Bible. I will mark it. Jonas, I will mark it. Now faith. Now faith. I will circle it. Circle it. Now faith. Today's faith. Not tomorrow. Not next tomorrow. Now own. My own now faith. Like, you do understand? You will write it. Write dates. Ah. If I show you my Bible, it's diary, oh. Where I saw my children. God told me that there are two nations in my womb. Two people will be separated from my body. He said one will be physically stronger than the other. You know that promise was not given to me, dead. That promise was for Isaac's children. But when I saw it, I looked at it, looked at it. The thing jumped at me. I said, this is two children now, twins. One is physically stronger than the other. So there's boy here, there's girl here. Ah! This is my word. I wrote dates, marked it, wrote David, wrote David there. I went to Ephesians 3.20. He told me that he would do exceeding abundant before above anything I can ask, think, or even imagine. I saw her, that's her there. So I go, born picking one, no carry for my belly. No money sickness. What are you saying? No pushing, no CS, no nothing. Free gift. I wrote it there. wrote her name, wrote dates. See, if you can find it in the word of God, you can have it in your world. It's not cliche. Once you can find it and you can activate it, how do you activate it? By meditating. You stay on that scripture. You read it, read it, think about it, turn it over in your mind, mutter it, say it to yourself. You know, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. He never said hearing by a preacher. That's another misconception we've had for years. That faith can only come when I'm sitting down. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Say the word of God to yourself. You will hear it. Lock yourself in a room and say the word of God to yourself that none shall be barren in this land. Say it whether male or female. So whether the problem is my husband or me, it's not possible. That if I give, it shall be given to me. Good measure, pressed together, shaking. Shall men give to my running over? Shall men give to my bosom? With the same measure that I give, it to be measured. So if I give, it's measured. If I give, it's measured back. The same measurement is measured back. You, there's a way you won't... You, see... And the thing about faith, let me tell you one thing about faith, is that it must always bring corresponding action. Once you are in faith, you will know the next immediate thing to do. If you don't know the next immediate thing to do, is not faith. You will know. Once you know, see, by the time I meditated on scriptures, and so what I mean, I, I started, I started uh, going, going around doctor to doctor, and I had a couple of encounters that were... Quite supernatural, and God, I mean, God was trying to get my attention, but I don't think that God has to, to always do magic before he can get our attention. And so I went to this, I mean, the, the, the last one, I went, to, I went to this doctor. My friend told me that, ah, that the man is, is a born-again Christian. We even give you scriptures to confess. We even give you, you know, all those kind of things. And God has specifically told me to stay in the word. You know, it's easy to preach. Doing is hard. Uh, it's very easy to preach. 
God can do all things. Nothing is impossible with God. Man, see, you know, Gebele. You now read the Bible now. You will not be, you will not be stammering. It's easy to preach. So God told me that thing you have been shouting, that the word of God works 100% of the time, you are going to sit down on that word till it produces for you 100%. So I went to this doctor, got there. The man now told me I should come back and see him. So two days before the day I was supposed to go and see him, I had to do some tests. So I went to the friend who took me, I went to see her. And so I got to her house. I met another woman there. Um, and so the woman and I got talking. And she said something about Davida. I think that was the name of her business. So I said, oh, ah, that's my daughter's name. I'm believing God. Do you hear that again? I'm believing God for twins. She now said, oh, her children's names, David and Davida. I said, are you serious? I'm coming to sow into your life. So I now told her my goodbye. So I'll send a seed to my friend. So my friend walked me to my car. So I was going. I had one small, tiny green car. I used to drive that time. So as we were walking to the car, she now said, you don't know that woman. I said, I don't know her he said, you don't know that woman. I said, I don't know her. Who she be? He said, you go to say, I said, I don't know her. Who she be? He said, that's your doctor's wife. I said, you serious? Hey, my doctor has twins. David and Davida. He said, who's twins? Person where they find picking her face, she they talk now. <laughs> so I got into my car. And the Holy Spirit said to me, loud like, another, like, a, like a human being was sitting beside me. He said, why won't you let me help you? Why won't you let me help you? The people you are running to are looking for the exact same thing. Say so they are not looking for Daniel and Daniela. They are not looking for Samuel and Samuela. It's David and Davida. So why won't you let me help you? So I advised myself. Sat in that car, cried a bit, then drove to the office. Got to the office, told Pastor K. He laughed at me, fell down from his chair laughing. Sat in, you know, they hear what? They go, they go. Where they find Davida and David for road. <laughs> and so... Then began my faith journey. And that's why I want to tell you that faith can grow. You can get faith. And so I sat down and I opened the Bible. Not what people had said. I had to see it for myself that it was actually there. That God actually said that if I serve the Lord my God, that he will bless my bread and water and he will take sickness from my midst. So whatever disease doctors had diagnosed me with was irrelevant. This was God speaking. God was promising me that if I would serve him and I would take his word, that I will not be barren, I will not have a miscarriage, and he personally will fulfill the number of my days. I sat down and I started looking for every scripture that I could find on infertility. Every scripture. And it's not now that Google is your friend. Those days, I had to sit down with Pastor Case Dick's Bible, his concordance, his net, Nelson Bible dictionary. I sat down. I had journals. Joy, Joy, you stay with me there now. I had journals. I would sit down, write these scriptures out. And then I started speaking them to myself because I needed to hear it. Because faith comes by hearing. So I started speaking these things to myself. Morning, afternoon, night. What did I say? Morning, afternoon, night. You have to be intentional with faith. Faith is not something that you just, when you go just as we are passing by, it will be happening. You have to be intentional. Morning, afternoon, night. I was confessing the scriptures. Why? Because the Bible says that if you find it, that it is medicine to all your flesh. And what did I need? I needed medicine. I needed to be healed, so I needed medicine. So the same way a doctor would tell you to take one tablet three times a day, I was taking the word three times a day, confessing it. I was hearing it. And as I began to hear it, it occurred to me that when God says a thing, it is final. Nothing can be taken from it. Nothing can be added to it. It is settled forever. And then I found out that the Bible says that he has given to me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Not that he will give me that he has given me. As far as it pertains to life, it has been given. Faith is the vehicle with which you collect it. It's not what you used to bully God, that, oh yeah, go and bring us back for me. It has been given. So I started meditating on it, I started speaking this word. I did this thing for five years, non-stop. Five 
solid years non-stop. At some point, there was nothing anybody could tell me. In fact, I remember one day, I started feeling in my body that I was pregnant. I didn't do a test, but I started feeling like I was pregnant. And so some people came to visit us, and then we're walking them. As we're walking them out, I just felt blood trickle down my leg. And I walked into the bathroom. And I opened my Bible. And the reason why I opened my Bible was to be sure that the scriptures were still there. If it is still there, the promise is still valid. So I opened it and I saw that none shall be barren in the land. I saw that I will not have a miscarriage. I saw that because I pay my tithe, that my vine will not refuse to bear fruit for me, neither will it cast its fruit before time. I saw there that my womb is fortified and my children within me are blessed. So I stood there with blood pouring down my leg like somebody urinating. And I said to my body, blood is not a child until I see a child come out of me. Blood or no blood, I insist that the word of God is true. I was shouting like this in the bathroom. I was talking to Satan because he was the one that had forgotten that when God speaks a word, it is final. My heart was not doubting, but Satan was bringing doubt into my head. Listen, the Bible says that if you say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and you do not doubt in your heart, can you doubt in your head? Yes. Because your head is logical. It can never make sense that you sit down and be reading the Bible. Or that you sit down and be drinking. At some point, the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, what are you looking for? I said, baby. He said, do you know what makes a baby? I said, you know, Lord. You know those kind of questions they will ask you as a prophet. They say, prophet, said, what is this uh, calabash? He said, you know, Lord. So I said, Lord, do you know? He said, a baby is body and blood. He said, so if you want body and blood, you want to make a baby, then take communion. It is the body and the blood of Jesus. See, let me tell you, God will keep giving you. See, faith will always birth the next thing to do. And when I knew, see, when I knew I had gotten it, I had gotten it. So I immediately started shopping for my babies. I bought three suitcases. Joy is here. All these things. I know if, if I lie, you will not catch me. I bought three suitcases. and named them Hadassah, David, and Davida. And I started buying their clothes. And I started declaring over them how they would be. Down to their temperament. <laughs> That's how it's spotty today. I confessed it. I confessed it. I'm telling you. David, see, I, I confess that David will be charming. He will be lovable. He will be emotionally balanced. Because I needed to correct some things that were wrong in his father's life. <laughs> I said the things that I have suffered. My daughter-in-law will not suffer it. She will not marry an emotional and available man. I will never agree. So I was confident. I said, you will be sweet. You will be kind. Your words will be soft. Your you know, this evening I was dressing up. Dutchie was making me up. And David came into the room where we were making up. He said, you know, mommy, this makeup thing doesn't make sense. He's six, by the way. I said, why? He said, because it doesn't really make you any prettier. You're already pretty. And by the time you come back, you have to clean it. So I think it's stressful. So I think you should stop making up. I mean, that was a compliment, but <laughs> we all kind of know that it takes a village. This is not really how we look like that. But the boy is, is, a, is a product of faith. <laughs> David will walk into a room and look at me and say, Mommy, wow, come. And I'll be following him and say, come, take me to the mirror and say, see, you are so beautiful. See, this thing works. It works. My daughter was in a school. Davida was in one school. Speaking where I don't wait. <laughs> I don't even want to tell. See, I'm, I'm coming. I have plenty of stories for you. The word works. See, when I'm shouting like this, I know why I'm shouting. I'm shouting because it works. When you find something that is good, except you're a wicked person, if you are not a wicked person, you will tell everybody, even people who doesn't consent, so, Omo, you don't chop that amala. I go, I got you. I go hook you up now. I'm, don't worry, I'm as they come. That, that's how you be. Do you understand? You'll be calling people who doesn't consent. But someone will be saying, oh, we have, um, the guests are coming. I say, I'm going to wait. You get one amala, one will buy for you. Like, it doesn't, that's, that's how I feel. This thing has changed my life. It has changed my life. That the word of God is true. If you can believe it, you will have it.
I'm telling you, let nobody lie to you. And you see, God did not plan for us to live an inferior life. He did not plan for us to struggle like other people. He planned a soft life. Very soft life. Where the ones that refuse to stay in the word, stay in the word it will produce. Stay in the word it will produce. Stay in the word it will produce. So I put Davida, picking where I don't find. Put her in one school here. They say it's any expensive school, no. I don't want to call the name. So that I'm not calling it. I'm not too like gossip. So I shall put her in one school on this island, though. Very expensive to school, though. A name. So I will go and pick my daughter. My daughter will look miserable every day. So they now ask me, they're asking me, does she even talk? Um, she looks like she has a learning disability. She looks like one thing, one thing. They start saying all kinds of things. And so Satan says, it's possible, though. You know that sometimes when people wait like that, they will not have children that have different kinds of things. Maybe that's why in the beginning, God didn't want to give you because he knew what you were. You know, Satan just said, come in at my mind. And then I remembered. I opened my Bible. You see, <laughs> it's the mistakes that I've made in this life. Eh? It's allowing us to see Bible. <laughs> I, that we can see what God said, written down. I see, let me tell you, I like writing down something, oh. Because if God say, says something, and they didn't write it, they can deny us. Aha. But they wrote it. As he said it, they wrote it. He said, my children will be known all over the world as the one Jehovah himself has blessed. He said, my children will be taught of the Lord, and great will be their peace. I said, picking where God they teach. Now he gets waiting. I said, no, Satan, it's not me you are talking to. So I started speaking to her. I said, you are taught of the Lord. You are taught of the Lord, Davida. And you have the mind of Christ. Christ cannot fail an exam. You have the mind of Christ. The Holy Spirit say, it's not only speaking, carry your child. Remove her before they kill her for you. Because what you are speaking, they can be countering it there. You are speaking to her and they are telling her she's a slow learner. I'll go to class, they'll say, oh, she's a slow learner. I'll speak to her, they'll say she's a slow learner. They were speaking to her. This Davida. <laughs> Every year when I go for prize giving day, I know say she go make me proud. <laughs> Do you understand? That's in the you know those kind of children that they call their name. David Alconco, best in literacy. David Alconco, best in French. David Alconco, best in Madrid. David Alconco, best in science. David Alconco, then I say best overall year three. David Alconco, now that kind. That is what the word can do if you insist. You must insist on the word of God. Let me show you something. Because I don't want you to also begin to think that it is a name it, claim it, grab it kind of thing. That's not what I'm teaching you. There's something that makes faith really work. And that's what I want to end with today. Before I do that, let me, let me finish that story of Davida. So I now started studying the scriptures. And then eventually, 20... 13 January, right? Yeah, 2013 January, I found out I was pregnant with Davida. After a few, after a few weeks, um, after a few weeks after I discovered, and I started antenatal. Now I got to the hospital. One overzealous nurse now gave me medicine. So as I was going, she said, Madam, come and take your drugs. And I said, what drugs? These drugs that they've never given me before. Say, Madam, please don't teach me my work. Carry your drug, they are routine drugs. Carry your drug and be going. And because I'm not a nurse, and I've not been pregnant before, and I don't really want to teach her her work, I carried the medicine, and I went home, and I drank it. And it was a Wednesday, midweek service, I still remember. I just felt, as I just stood up, my sister Diche just followed me. Pick it where we don't define things. So if I do like this, everybody will do like that. If I do like everybody. <laughs> so as I stood up, she just, as I just opened the car door, I just she just, and this child, once I got pregnant, I didn't even know I was pregnant because I didn't have any morning sickness. I didn't have any vomiting. I didn't have any, I didn't put on weight, nothing. So if I don't tell you I'm pregnant, in fact, I was already six months gone before anybody in church knew. And it was because I announced it and opened my tummy when I was preaching. And the church scattered. So I said, what's happening? I just started vomiting. I started vomiting. I started bleeding. So I went back to the hospital. They said, 
ah, oh, madam, it's threatened, threatened abortion. Um, they say, you are, it looks like you're about to have a miscarriage. I say, what did you take? I gave the doctor. The doctor now turned my file and I said, but well, it's written on your file that you're allergic to these drugs. Who gave it to you? Matron began hide nurse. Nurse began hide matron. All of a sudden, nobody knew the woman again. So they said to me, Madam, it looks like this may be a miscarriage. They started speaking English. They were talking. But you know, I could not hear a word they were saying. Because all I could hear was, if you serve the Lord your God. That's what faith does for you. That's what faith does for you. It becomes alive. It has a voice. Faith will be speaking when doubt is speaking. Doubt will be saying, this speaking, don't go. It's me, it's yes, don't mean anything. Faith will say, it is impossible for God to lie. It is impossible for God to lie. It is impossible for God to lie. This woman was talking, telling me do's and don'ts. You will lie down, you will do injection. She was just talking, talking, talking. And I was staring into space because I was having interaction with the word. And so this elderly woman said to me, Madam, are you okay? I just turned to her and said, Madam, with all due respect, are you okay? If you know how many years I've carried this child, you cannot tell me. I say, picking where I don't dedicate. If you go, give me injection, give me my they go. But this picking, I don't dedicate and I'm not coming back here. And that's how I, Pastor K now got angry. I said, no, you're going to America. She went to America. Miraculously had her. Two years later, woke up one morning again, January 5th, 2015. And I just started feeling funny. So I said to Pastor K, I don't know, I'm feeling somehow. He now said, um, you are feeling somehow. What does that mean? I said, no, no, I'm just feeling somehow. He said, what's today? I said, January 5th. He now said, ah, go and do another test. Now, maybe it's January 5th, 2013, you found out. I said, that's how they, that they, they used to get pregnant. <laughs> I beg, don't annoy me. But lo and behold, I was pregnant. Go to the hospital, they started telling me different things. Madam, you have preeclampsia, you have posteclampsia, you have ineclampsia, you have oneclampsia. <laughs> All kinds of things. Your blood pressure, your placenta is not working. All kinds of things. They tell me all kinds of things that they will need to take. In fact, the doctor told me, he said, um, how many children does your mother have? I said, six. And I said, oh, okay, no problem. We'll take this one out. You get up. You, get... <laughs> you see this laugh where I laugh? That's why I love the doctor. I said, sir, is that how they told you that they used to? It's two nations. If you come at this one. <laughs> The man I said, no, 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 no. I say, sir, nothing is happening. No, baby, this baby's not going. I say, no, medically, when it comes down to it, we always choose the life of the mother. I say, you will not choose anybody. <laughs> this whole life is complete. Oh, God, then no put my hand for my matter. I got to church. Pasquale was preaching. And he was preaching randomly. And the reason why I'm saying this, before I get into what I really want to say, the reason why I'm saying this, I want you to know that the word of God is alive. Pastor K was speaking about something different, and he was just talking. And he was just shouting. You know, there are sometimes Pastor K would just get into it and start shouting. I was saying, the incorruptible word of God. I, I was saying it. Do this, we say, listen. Because I was, you know, I was just like, must, I was really thinking that, must it always be a battle? Like, must it always be a battle? But you see, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Faith is for fighting. Ay, 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 ay. This world, we overcome this world by faith. This world wants to overcome us, but we no go green. Yes, and the only way to overcome is by faith. So while he was saying it, the Holy Spirit said, listen. So I paid attention to what he was saying. And he said, the incorruptible seed of the word. And the Holy Spirit said, what's the meaning of incorruptible? I said, it cannot be spoilt. It cannot rot in, cannot scatter. It shall, that's where my English reach. What's, what's the point? So he said, listen again. He said, how did your babies come? I said, by the word. He said, if it is the word that brought it, the word will sustain it. Because the source of a thing is its sustenance. See, he immediately said that I knew that everything was going to be okay. Today, they're all running around. My children surround my table. The word of God is alive. The word is what births faith in you. I'm using child as an example. There are so many other things I've overcome by the word. I'm just using that one as an example. Because the word works whatever the situation. It works. Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11.6. I'll end here. You see, many years after, I was in marriage and I started bleeding again. And the Holy Spirit said to me, 
go and read that scripture again. And I went and read that scripture in Mark 5. And the Holy Spirit said to me, your friend told you then that if you can touch the hem of his garment, you'll be made whole. Many years ago, many years after, you are still in the same situation. He said, did you ever check for yourself? Be like the Berean Christians. After they hear message, like they will go back and check whether it is so. Anything anybody is telling you that is not in the word of God, carry it and fling like this. So I went back and I checked. And as I was reading it, the Bible says that this woman heard about Jesus. Faith comes by hearing. It says there can be no faith if you don't hear about Jesus. She heard and she said, some versions say she said and she kept on saying that if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Now, many people were touching Jesus that day, but that woman's touch was different. It was later when she was healed that Jesus said something, and that's what changed my life. Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. It was not the touching of the garment. If she had touched his head, she would have been made whole. If she had touched his back, she would have been made whole. It was that she had faith that if I touch the hem, it was the faith that brought the power because everybody was touching him. It's faith that makes the difference. Give me Hebrews 11.6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible. I know the scripture says it is impossible to please him. And that's probably because the scripture before talks about Enoch. That Enoch was, walked with God and he was not because he pleased God. And they say without faith, it is impossible. What is impossible? Anything. Without faith, it's impossible. A lot of women send me messages and say, oh, I want to go and do IVF. And let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with medicine. Whether it is IVF, surrogacy, adoption, your own natural birth. Without faith, it is impossible. It is not possible. And why does it say it's not possible? See the line. This is what you need to get if you're going to have faith. Forget all the, if you claim it, name it, tag it, confess it. Confession without knowing who you are confessing about is a waste of time. You are just shouting and making noise. He says, for he who comes to God must believe that he is. That's faith. You must first believe that he is. Too many people do not believe that God is. We know about him, but we don't really believe it. And it shows in the way we behave. And I tell people all the time, when people confess and say, God is with me, when they are in danger. But when you want to do bad sin, do you also know that God is with you? So as you they pull down your blouse, God is with you. As you want to kiss her neck, God is with you, bro. So we are selective when we want him to be with us. Say, so you must first believe that he is. You must have a strong consciousness of God. A strong one. That's the thing that makes me declare some kind of statements. That others may. I cannot. Not because I'm proud. Not because I'm arrogant. But because I believe that he is. And he's a rewarder. He's a rewarder. He is. He gives you what is due to you. He is. You must first believe that God is. How does your action show that you believe that God is? Because you can't have faith if you don't believe that God is. If you don't believe that he's real. You can't have faith. Forget. You can say anything you want to say. You can say, oh, I believe I'm going to have this. See, I can believe I'm a horse from today to next year. I will not be a horse. I may have horse hair, but I'm definitely not going to be a horse. He must first believe that God is. If your faith is going to produce, you must believe that there's someone who exists and who will reward your faith. He's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Not those who just seek him in passing. Those who seek him with intentionality. Do you know what it means to sit down and confess the word of God for five years on one issue? Without flinching. I believed that he was a reward. I believe, I knew like I knew my name, that it's only a matter of time. I knew. 
Like you see this belly? I get them now. It's only a matter of time for people to see it. I knew I was pregnant. There was nothing anybody could tell me that I was not pregnant. It didn't, it didn't even cross my mind. Yes, the longest five years pregnancy, but I mean, I knew that I was pregnant. And why? Because I knew who I was dealing with. If you know who you are dealing with, then your faith will grow. You see, there was a guy who was leprous, and he said to Jesus, he said, if you will, if you are willing, you can make me whole. And Jesus said to him, of course I'm willing. And Jesus went beyond just speaking to him. Jesus touched him, a leper. You know if you touch a leper, you become unclean. Jesus touched him and he became clean. You must know who you are dealing with. He's a God who is willing and able. Now, some people are able, but they are not willing. Then some people are willing, but they are not able. Am I willing to buy Pastor Maka a house in Banana Island? Very, very willing. Am I able right now? Not really. <laughs> Yet. Fully. But I believe. I'm not in faith yet. I'm hoping. <laughs> but that, that's my point exactly. That there are some times that you want to do something, but God is both willing and able. So you are not trying to convince him. He's willing and he's able. Ephesians 3.20 says our God is able. Hey. See, when you put those things together, that he's willing to do it for you and that he's able. In fact, one, one scripture that I love so much. Oh. I love Bible. Sha. Chai. See. <sighs> There's a man that came to Jesus and his son had been, they had been possessed by a demon and all those things and disciples were trying to heal him. And, and then the guy said to Jesus that if you can do anything, message translation, and Jesus said, if, hey, I did, I, bless I did already had this film. He said, if, he said, there can be no if among believers. Please, somebody me look for that scripture. He said, if, I, I cannot imagine Jesus' face. They said, do you, do you know who you are talking to? You must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder. If you know who you are dealing with, faith will be easy. The reason why you are struggling with your faith is you think you are the one working it. That if I believe really hard. <laughs> this guy did not even fully believe. He said, I believe. Help my unbelief. <laughs> Jesus said, now you will wait. It is a go move. We don't move since now. Say, if, if help me with my doubts. Ah, see, if you don't get anything I said today, please get this, that you must first believe that he is. That he is what? He is willing and he is able. And that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Whatever that thing you are believing for, let me tell you, if you know who the rewarder is, then you already have it. So what do I want? I want to challenge you this next couple of days. As every minister is ministering here, catch everything that you can. Everything, every instruction. And then go back and check that it is in the word. Check that it is in your Bible. Mark it. Write your name beside it. Take it, see, if you can find it in the word of God, you can have it in your world. I'm telling you from experience. I'm telling you because I've seen God do these things. I'm not just preaching to you a, a cute message, something that will make you jump and shout and be happy. No. I'm telling you this thing works 100% of the time without failure. Why? Because God can be trusted to keep his word. God says something, it is as good as done. You can take it to the bank. Were well, you blessed this evening? Yeah. And I want us to all rise this evening. I don't know what it is that you're going to be anticipating for God to do for the next couple of days. But we have already laid a foundation for you tonight. And I want you to pray that God will begin to expand some of these instructions in your heart. Some of the things that you have struggled with for a long time, all those things you are believing God for, you will go back now and get a scripture for it and you will take it. 
You see, there are some things that God, when God gives you something, he wants you to take it. He wants you to take it. The Greek word is you lambano it. You take it. It's your own. You don't, you don't be saying, uh, Pastor Chike say, well, give me handkerchief. I say, Pastor Chike, give me now. Pastor Chike, be giving me handkerchief now. You self now. Wow. You see, that, you see this is the difference between man and God. Thank God that God is not man. And he's giving me, I'm saying, Pastor Chike, give me now. Pastor Chike, give me. Pastor Chike, give me. Pastor Chike, do it. 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 Pastor Chike, give me now. Okay. Pastor Yomi, please give me now. Because you have left God now. God did not answer you. You now go to Babalawo. But if you know that Pastor Chike, Pastor Chike, be God, now be patient. This is our God, no be God. Oh. God is patient and is kind. Be patient, sir. <laughs> As I'm begging there, Pastor Yomi, you will still be there now, waiting patiently for me to come back. You know what they God now. I don't like this kind of God, though. <laughs> this kind of God, I never see your kind. <laughs> So when you try that one again, God is still waiting for you patiently. Because the hanky has always been available. It's just you that needs to be faithful. You see, the original word for faith in the Hebrew is the exact same word for faithfulness. So it's not just about us being in faith to receive. It's also us knowing that God is faithful to give. So when you ask for the hanky, you open your eyes and you find that, did God say he's going to give me? Yes. Is he willing to give me? Yes. Is he able to give me? Yes. Then I'm not going to stand around and shouting. I will take what is mine and say, thank you, sir. I will take it. I will take it. And even if I'm the only one seeing it, like I was the only one seeing my pregnancy for five years, I will hold on to it. You don't throw it away. You hold on to it. Till other people begin to see it. You hold on to it. You hold on to it. You keep holding on and you keep saying God's word. Even if it doesn't look like it's happening, you keep saying it. You keep confessing it. You keep saying it. You keep saying it. You keep speaking to it. You keep speaking to it. Let me close with Mark 11, 20 to 24. You keep speaking God's word. This is Jesus and his disciples. They passed by a fig tree. And Jesus was hungry. So Jesus went to the fig tree. And he didn't see fruit, but there were leaves all over. And then Jesus cursed the fig tree. That from today, nobody will eat from you again. And then they left. They went to the temple, did all kinds of things. And then they were coming back. Give me verse verse 20. As they were coming back, it says, Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter remembered. Because Peter was there when Jesus cursed the fig tree. And he said to Jesus, Rabbi, look! The fig tree you cursed us with that. He was so excited. See what Jesus said? Have faith in God. Uh-uh. Sir, what did we say? What are you answering us? They're excited. That, hey, Jesus, see what you Jesus say. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. And that's what I want to say to you today. Don't have faith in faith. Have faith in God. Because some people have come for this conference now. Ah, by the time they finish preaching the word of faith, I'll be charged up. Have faith in God. It's not in your believing. It's in who you are believing. We don't have faith in our prayers. We have faith in who answers our prayers. He says, have faith in God. And when you have faith in God, see the next thing he says. He says, truly I tell you. In other words, I swear. If you have faith in God, eh? If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea. And does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen. He says, it will be done for them. So you keep saying it. You keep saying it. Your faith is in God, you keep speaking it. Your faith is in God, you keep declaring it. Your faith is in God, you don't let go of your hanky. You keep saying it. This is the substance. This is the substance of what I'm hoping for. You keep saying it. You keep saying it, but my faith is in God. My faith is not in my faith. My faith is not in my ability. My faith is not in my confession. Confession is not jazz. Christians. You think if you just mutter some words, Say, if you don't believe it in your heart. Even salvation, that's how salvation works. You must believe it in your heart before you confess it to your mouth. Bible says we believe, therefore we speak. We don't speak before we believe. So you believe, you keep saying it. 
And it's only a matter of time. The Bible says you will have whatever you say. You will have whatever you say. How many people are ready to have whatever they say? So we're going to take one minute and just pray. And our prayer is not going to be for the things. Listen to me before you start praying. Because Christians are so quick. We want, we want, we want. Your prayer is that you will see God more clearly. That your intimacy with him will deepen. So that you will be able to believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder. You're going to say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. I want to see you. I want to know you. I want to understand you. So that I can believe that you are. Open your mind and pray for yourself tonight. Listen, if you believe that he is and that he's a rewarder, you will have everything you need. Everything that you desire. Just one minute. Open your mouth. Pray for yourself. I have just one more minute. That I will have a strong consciousness of you, O oh God. I will never lose sight, O oh God, of believing that you are and that you are a rewarder. That I can say, I know on whom I have believed. He rewards with children. He rewards with career. He rewards with business. He rewards with opportunities. He's a rewarder. Key to the God who is a rewarder tonight. Key to him. Believe that he is. Father, we thank you. We thank you for opening our eyes again tonight to the truth of your word. That you are a rewarder. We believe that you will reward. We believe that you will reward. We're not afraid. We're not worried. We're not looking for things, oh God. We're looking to you. We must believe that you are and that you are a rewarder. So we receive our reward in full in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I declare that today marks a turning point for your children. From today till the end of the conference, miracles in the name of Jesus. I said miracles in the name of Jesus. I declare a turnaround. Those stubborn situations will bow from today in the name of Jesus. I declare that it will continue to grow from glory to glory, from strength to strength. And we declare International Word of Faith Conference opened and going to a new level in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, celebrate God. If you know he's a rewarder, come on, celebrate God. If you believe he's a rewarder, come on, celebrate God. If you believe he will.